Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change became official this past Friday in Marrakech, Morocco, marking the first time that governments have agreed on legally binding limits to global temperature rises. This was negotiated by nearly 200 countries in December 2015 and finally came into force on November 4, 2016. The agreement commits world leaders to keeping global warming below 2 degrees Celsius, seen as a threshold for safety by scientists, and pursuing a tougher target of 1.5 degrees Celsius. All governments have ratified the accord, including the US, China, India, and the European Union. However, there is still much hard work ahead. For example, many companies have not even figured out yet how much greenhouse gases they emit, much less made plans to curb these emissions. Assad Rayman, international climate campaigner at Friends of the Earth, said that the Paris Agreement is a major step in the right direction, but far tougher action is needed to rapidly slash emissions. Earlier this week, NASA's Earth Observatory posted satellite images showing the dramatic decline of Utah's Great Salt Lake over the past five years. The Great Salt Lake is a terminal bay, meaning water flows in through rivers and streams, but can't leave. This allows for much mineral buildup, creating a rich ecosystem that sustains brine shrimp, millions of migratory birds, waterfowl hunting, and other species. Mineral industries also rely on the lake, worth an annual $1.2 billion. So why is the Great Salt Lake drying up? The rivers that feed into it have been long diverted by humans, and today about 40% of that water gets used instead by farms, cities, and industry. And the problem is worsened by drought. The only solution is to stop diverting so much water, or else the Great Salt Lake will end up like the infamous Lake Mead or the Aral Sea. For months, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has been fighting against a proposed oil access pipeline that would run near the reservation, threatening the tribe's water supply and sacred sites. These protests have garnered much attention on social media and among celebrities with the hashtag NoDAPL. Why is this so controversial? The fight over the Dakota Access Pipeline encompasses everything from the federal government's historically appalling treatment of Native Americans to broader debates about fracking and climate change. The biggest confrontation came at the end of October, with 141 arrests. If built, it would carry some 450,000 barrels of crude oil per day across more than 1,000 miles underground, and cost almost $4 billion. The Standing Rock Sioux are concerned about oil leaks and the fact that the pipeline runs directly through their sacred lands. Walmart CEO Doug McMillan has announced Walmart's environmental plan for the next few years as it tries to satisfy customers who want green products at affordable prices. The world's largest retailer will seek to reduce emissions in its own operations by 18% by 2025 and reduce waste it adds to landfills in key markets such as Canada and the U.S. It also plans to be powered by 50% clean and renewable energy sources. Walmart has been under pressure from consumers, especially millennials, who want environmentally friendly items. In addition, the company wants its private brand packaging to be 100% recyclable. These initiatives are a step forward in improving Walmart's reputation. The U.S. keeps shutting down nuclear power plants and replacing them with coal or gas ones. Since 2013, the U.S. has lost five nuclear power plants due to economic reasons, cheap natural gas, unfavorable market policies, and or local opposition. Those five plants alone produced nearly as much electricity as all of America's solar panels last year, and the nuclear industry still provides about 19% of the nation's electricity. According to the Rhodium Group, if all seven of the plants currently scheduled to be shut down are lost, about 75% of that lost power will likely be replaced by natural gas, and greenhouse gas emissions will be much higher. Unless energy policies are changed to properly value nuclear power, these nuclear plants will continue to disappear. Thank you for watching, see you next week, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more environmental news every week.